Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be looking at investing in property in the UK and in particular how to invest into buy to let properties and also what sort of upfront fees and ongoing monthly fees are associated with buy to let investments. So there are some videos out there on YouTube at the moment that go through the buy to let process but I feel like a lot of them actually leave out some of the important information or some of the key expenses that you will need to factor into your calculations. There's some of the things that I've seen missed out are tax, maintenance and rental gaps as well. All these things are massively important, especially if you're trying to calculate whether a property is actually worth it and worth investing in and will actually give you a good return on investment. So today's video is going to be split into three sections. The first section is looking at the upfront fees associated with purchasing a property and purchasing a buy to let property. The second section will be looking at the ongoing fees and ongoing expenses associated with running a buy to let property. And this will include a section on maintenance and tax that you may have to pay. And the third section will be going through a scenario which is pretty realistic. And for the scenario, I've used a spreadsheet that I've built where you plug in some figures based on a property that you've seen. And then it will um, tell you your upfront costs, your potential monthly costs, um, and then taking into account your tax um, and potential sort of fees that you have to pay there. And giving you an overall figure, um, which is a profit per month and per year, which you could potentially earn as part of investing in that property. So if you feel this is something you would be interested in, please stick around to the end of the video and we can see what the scenario comes out as. And also, if you are new around here and enjoy investing or finance-based videos, then please hit the subscribe button. So section one, we're gonna be looking at upfront costs. So investing in a standard buy-to-let property, you tend to need around a 25% deposit. This is because standard buy-to-let mortgages tend to offer you a 75% loan to value. So you need at least a 25% deposit in order to take out a buy-to-let mortgage with most companies. There are some providers out there who will offer an 80% loan to value. So that means you only need a 20% mortgage on the price of the, of the property. But at the moment, these companies are very few and far between. And if you did go at 80% loan to value buy to let mortgage, then you would expect your monthly fees in terms of a mortgage payment to be higher. So the second thing you have to factor in is stamp duty. Now, if you're buying a property for the first time, then you are exempt from stamp duty. Although the majority of buy to let investors will actually own their own property already or already own a buy to let property, which means any properties they buy moving forward, they will need to pay an additional 3% stamp duty. So stamp duty is an upfront cost that you need to factor in alongside your deposit. The third upfront fee that you need to consider is solicitor fees. Now when buying a property, the solicitor fees can vary depending on obviously what solicitors you go with. When I bought my first property, the solicitor fees were around five to seven hundred pound. So this is a sort of typical amount that you'd expect, but obviously they can vary depending on who you actually go with. Number four is mortgage product fees. Now the majority of mortgages that you take out, there'll be a mortgage product fee that's associated with it. So this is basically a fee that you have to pay in order to take out that mortgage with that company. Now these mortgage product fees typically range between 995 pound and two and a half thousand pound. And there are companies out there which won't actually charge you a mortgage product fee. However, those companies may give you a worse interest rate, which means that you may potentially be paying more each month on your normal uh, monthly mortgage amount. So I'd say the typical amount is around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds for a mortgage fee. And depending on who you go with, there is an option to add this on to the end of your mortgage. So you don't have to necessarily pay it as an upfront fee, but you may just wanna pay it so you don't actually pay interest on it, which is why I've included it in the upfront fee section. Number five for upfront fees is a survey. Now, if you are buying a home, especially for an investment and you're keen to sort of own it for a long time, you may feel more comfortable in actually purchasing a full home buyer survey on the property. There are different levels of surveys that you can buy, but if you went for a full home buyer survey, this gives you a more in-depth look on the property. And this should flag any major issues with the property or any issues that may potentially come up in the future. So a few months ago, um, I actually got a home buyer survey on a property that me and um, one of my mates was looking at. And this home buyer survey actually flagged up a load of issues with the property, which when we actually got a quote for was around £10,000. And the home buyer survey was only around £400. So for the sake of spending £400 on this survey, it actually flagged £10,000 at least worth of issues um, and damages on the property that we wouldn't have seen sort of on face value when we were looking at the property. But obviously you can go for a bog standard survey, which will be less, um, but obviously it won't be as in depth. So it all depends on your personal preference um, and your sort of risk tolerance. And if you want peace of mind, you might want to pay a bit more and get a, a full survey done on the property before you actually purchase it. So those are the key upfront fees that you'd have to factor in before purchasing a buy to let property or any property. 
So now we'll take a look at the ongoing costs associated with a buy-to-let investment. So the first one, obviously, is the buy-to-let mortgage itself. So there are two types of mortgages that you can take out. There's an interest-only mortgage and a repayment mortgage. So depending on your goal as a landlord, if your goal is for monthly cash flow, then you'd probably take out an interest only mortgage. So this means that you'll only pay the interest each month on the mortgage and you won't actually be paying down the capital amount that you borrowed as part of that mortgage. However, if your goal was to eventually own the property and potentially sell it for some capital gains, um, then you'd probably take out a repayment mortgage. So this is where you pay the interest on the mortgage each month, but you're also paying down that capital or that initial 75% um, mortgage amount that you borrowed from the company, you're actually paying that back over time. So eventually when the mortgage term pays um, runs out, you'll actually own 100% of that property. So again, it all depends on whether you want cash flow or potential capital gains. Um, it all depends on your strategy as a landlord. And obviously that will change the monthly figure that you have to pay as a mortgage payment. Um, obviously interest only mortgages, the monthly uh, amount that you pay each month will be a lot less than a repayment mortgage. Number two is letting agent fees. Now this all depends on how hands-on you want to be when actually being a landlord of a property. You can get letting agents to fully manage the property, which means they'll find a tenant, they'll deal with all the um, rental collections, and they'll also be the first point of call if there's any maintenance or issues with the property. Obviously, if you went for a full management service with a letting agency and wanted to be completely hands-off, then this will cost you more. Also, you can go the other end and actually manage it yourself, um, and you could probably just pay a letting agent um, to just find a tenant for you and pay an upfront fee, but then you actually deal with actually collecting the rent and any of the maintenance issues to do with the property. So again, depending on how hands-on you wanna be, um, will depend on how much it will actually cost you each month in letting agent fees. So as a general estimate, it can range from around 10% for the bog standard um, service for a letting agent's fee, um, all the way up to, I've been quoted, around 15 to 17% for a fully managed service. Number three is service and ground charges. So these won't apply if you're buying a freehold property, but they will if you're buying a leasehold property. Leasehold properties tend to be flats and apartments and, and stuff like that. And some of the fees that you pay on an annual basis will go towards the upkeep of the building itself. So if you are buying a leasehold, you need to take into account these particular fees. But on a plus side, these fees that you pay may include building insurance as well, which we'll get to in a minute in terms of insurance. So even though you're paying um, service fees and, and ground um, charges and stuff like that, um, you may save on building insurance if it is included. So number four is insurance. So obviously there's different types of insurance you can get and different levels of cover. As a bog standard, when purchasing a property, you will need building insurance. You can then add in contents insurance if you are, for example, doing a HMO or stuff like that and you're providing appliances and items to the tenant. Um, you can get contents insurance to make sure those are covered. But for a typical buy-to-let property, you might not want to um, get contents insurance, but it's completely up to you. It's your preference. And also you can add onto insurance legal protection and also landlord's insurance which means that it will cover you for um, any issues with the tenants in terms of legal fees. They'll be hopefully covered as part of your um, insurance that you take out with them. And also if there's issues with obtaining rent from tenants, you can get insurance which covers you for a certain period of time. Number five is tax. And I haven't seen any video out there actually talk about this at the moment. So when people are showing you their profit or potential profit, you do need to factor in tax that you'll pay on it. So again, while I'm talking about tax, I do advise you to actually go onto the government website and actually read through what you'd pay tax on, but I'm trying to give you just a brief example or a brief overview on the tax rules for 2021. But again, I'm not a tax um, advisor. Um, I'm not a qualified accountant. Um, so yeah, so please do your own research, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of some sort of um, amounts or fees that you have to take into account when you're looking at your profit. You do need to factor in tax. So the tax rules seem to change each year and it's getting more and more harder for a landlord. So this basically means compared to prior years, you probably will be paying more tax because you're not just paying tax on the profit, you're paying tax on the whole rental thing and receiving a tax relief um, of 20% on your interest on your mortgage. Also, what tax you pay depends on what tax threshold you're in, if you're in a 20% bracket or 40% bracket. So it will really vary, but there are calculators out there which you can use to get a rough idea of what sort of tax you will pay and also what particular things you can deduct um, in order to reduce your tax bill. But you do need to factor in tax, especially if you've got a, a job at the moment or you've got other um, rental properties, you do need to factor in tax when you're looking at your profit to see whether it's worth investing. 
And number six is another thing that I don't see people talking about is maintenance associated with being a landlord and also gaps in rental income if tenants do leave and you haven't managed to get a tenant in to replace them. But I would say you need to be putting aside some sort of money, even if it's 15, 20%, of the income you receive into a fund to ensure that if something does go wrong with the property or if there is gaps in rental income, you are covered. So those are all the main ongoing fees associated with a buy to let property. Now let's get into section three where we look at a scenario and see what it comes out as. So for this scenario, we're gonna use a purchase price on the property as £100,000 with a 75% loan to value buy to let mortgage. And the rental income for this property is £600 per month. So upfront costs associated with this £100,000 purchase price. So number one is a deposit. So we're using a 75% loan to value, which means we'll need a 25% deposit, which will be £25,000. Number two is stamp duty. Now this stamp duty is based on actually myself owning a property already, which means I'll be, um, I'll be liable to pay the additional 3% on stamp duty. So the stamp duty on this will be £3,000. The next upfront cost is the solicitor fee. So what I've done is I've used a solicitor fee of around £600 for purchasing the property. And I've also incorporated a £400 home buyer survey, which means the survey and the solicitor fees will come to around £1,000. And finally, the mortgage product fee. Now for this scenario, I'm not gonna add it to my actual mortgage. Um, I'm gonna put it as an upfront fee in order to just pay it. So the mortgage product fee that I've used is £1,500. And that's actually based on um, a buy to let mortgage that I found. I tend to use Money Supermarket, type in some figures and it brings up a list of banks or a list of companies that will be willing to offer you um, that, that particular mortgage product. So total upfront fees to purchase this £100,000 property is £30,500. So now let's move on to ongoing costs. So firstly is the actual mortgage fee itself or the monthly buy to let mortgage that you'd have to pay. So I've gone for an interest only mortgage and that payment will be £100 per month. So next up is letting fee. So I've gone on an average, I've seen some for 10, I've seen some for 15. So I've gone for a rough 12% as a monthly fee that you'll have to pay. And that 12% is based on the rental income that you receive. The property that I've seen is a freehold property. So therefore I'm not gonna incorporate any service or ground charges. Now onto insurance, I've put as 50 pound per month. So this is based on actually some quotes that I've received. And this included buildings insurance and some of the legal protection, but didn't include contents insurance. So this came to around £600 a year, so £50 per month. And finally, the amount of tax that you'd expect to pay. So with my current place of employment, I'm in the 20% tax threshold. And even with the rental income of this property, it would not push me into the upper bracket. So there are many calculators online, and I would suggest sort of trying to find one or two that you think are good. Um, if you want me to list some of them, or ones that I've used to sort of estimate your um, potential tax that you'd have to pay each year, then let me know. But the calculator of you suggested that I'd have to pay around £907 per year in tax. So if we divided that by 12, it'd give us a monthly tax payment of around £76. So if we add up all the total monthly expenses, you can see that it's coming to £298 per month. So if we deduct this amount from the £600 per month that we are achieving, this gives us around £302 profit per month. This, however, does not include any maintenance or rental gaps that we've discussed prior. So you may wish to put 15 or 20 percent of that profit away into a fund in order to cover you for any eventual issues moving forward. Say you put around 25 percent of your profit away as part of this maintenance and um, rental gap sort of cover. This will then give you a profit of around £225 per month. So in terms of this property, you're looking at a rental yield of 7.2 percent. And you're looking at a return on investment if you include the tax but not necessarily the maintenance fees you're looking at a return on investment of around 12 percent so there you go there's some of the upfront costs that you need to factor in some of the ongoing costs you need to factor in and how they actually appear in a scenario to give you an idea of what sort of profit you could potentially look at if you found a property that's sort of a hundred thousand pounds and offered around 600 pound per month in rent again obviously some of these figures can vary and I'm not a financial advisor or any of that sort of stuff. I'm just a guy on YouTube just talking through his finances and what he's learned and what he's doing at the moment. So please look at other websites, especially uh, the government website as well, to find out all the stuff around tax and that. But this is just to give you an idea of what sort of expenses that you will need to pay as a buy-to-let investor. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I've realised that this is actually quite a lengthy video. I didn't mean it to be. Um, but there was quite a lot to get through. If you have enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe for more content. I am hoping to purchase property um, in the future. Um, so I'll probably document that as well. So if you have stayed this long, 
Um, there could be some sort of buy-select property videos moving forward um, and my actual um, scenarios that I've sort of come across and properties that I'm potentially looking to buy. So yeah, also I do portfolio updates and dividend and stock um, videos. So if you enjoy that sort of stuff, stick around and hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.